I was over there talking to um to Jamai. You just jumped out this the chat. Just said you didn't want to talk to us, man. Oh yeah, I had a uh, phone call. Somebody oh, called yeah, me. I had a phone call. Time is right. Time is right, sir. All right. Uh, you want to go ahead and start, bro? Like, you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. You go ahead and intro. All right. Shalom, shalom. Before we begin, want to give all praises, power, and glory, and thanks to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, and Double honors to the elders, the prophets, the apostles, the wise men, our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Salutations to the hopeful elect. They're pushing the truth to the four corners of the earth. To them, we say shalom. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about Melchizedek and who he was and where he stands in the Bible. All right, before we begin, it's going to be hard to digest, but we're going to go into detail about it. Um, so Melchizedek is actually the whole shot for people that didn't know that. Um, what do you want me to start? Hebrews 3 and 1? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm going to start off. We're going to be dwelling a lot in Hebrews as well as Psalms, but Hebrews is going to be a main point that we're going to be dwelling in. So I'm going to read Hebrews 3, and verse 1. It says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, uh, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. So what people have to understand, like we say, uh, Isaiah 28 and 10, line upon line, precept upon precept. So the Messiah is the king and the high priest of Israel and the high priest of God. Well, what are we talking about? Well, let's go to the story in Genesis. All right, I'm going to read Genesis 14 and 18. And we talked about this, the last video about, you know, uh, I did with Brother Jamal, we did about tithing. We haven't seen that video. It's on our YouTube. <clears throat> so, 14 and 18. And it says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. So, right there, it's, it's letting you know that, um, you know, he's the, the priest of the Most High God. So, what you got to understand is, uh, what's interesting about Melchizedek to help people connect dots even more is you know he greeted Abraham with bread and wine you know which later became symbols of Hamashiach's Passover sacrifice of his body and blood if people you know haven't connected dots or not but you got to also uh, understand that Melchizedek addressed God as you know possessor of heaven and earth around 2k year I mean 2,000 years later you know Yahushua did the same thing and address, you know, you know, Yahweh as Lord of heaven and earth. So you got to understand the connections to these things. But, you know, it takes a higher understanding on that one. Uh, I'm going to jump to what, Psalms. And I'm going to dwell in the 110th chapter. And what a lot of people have to understand uh, about this chap chapter is David prophesies of the coming Messiah, right? So in line one, it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So what does he mean by that? Well, he's letting you know, you know, he's prophesying about the Messiah. But if you, you can go more into details if you read Matthew 22, if I am correct, with the riddle that we talked about. The last time, yeah, Matthew 22, when he, yeah. when he talks uh, in verses 42 through 45, you know, when he's 44, he says, The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? So he was talking to his son Solomon, which is also, you know, uh, yeah, right. person that Messiah, yeah, that the Messiah was. So that's how you connect the dots on that one. And you know, if you want to read more about it or go more into detail, you can look at Hebrews uh, eight and one, as well as ten and twelve, as well as twelve and two. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna touch on that later. Yeah, I just wanted to get them if they want to okay. write down on it. Um, so if I want to read through Psalms, uh, I'm gonna read through four and six. 
So it says, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. So he's letting you know that now. You know, yeah, Yahweh Shai is at the right hand of, you know, Yahweh. Because the right hand is the righteous side. If people don't understand that one. The left hand is Satan, you know, on the evil side. And the right hand is the righteous side. Mm -hmm. So that's how you got to understand when you're looking at stuff, especially when you're looking at clues and things like that. You got to understand the, the, the duality of things, but that's a different subject. I'm going to let Brethren Paris take over after that one. And or, just, yeah, go ahead. Then just like Brother Darren was talking about earlier, the, the right hand side is, is the righteous hand. That makes the, the righteous uh, movement of the Most High, and that's the mo and that's the side that Melchizedek and Yahweh Shai were both spoken to sit on. So that's how you get the connection between the two. That this cannot, because it would be blasphemous to talk about another person and then talk about Yahweh Shai being Lord of the Lord, then Melchizedek, if they're not the same person. So that has to. So that's where you. That's where you see a contradiction. You have to know. You understand that there's. Um, regeneration and reincarnation of the spirit and i want to touch on uh hebrews 8 and 1. now things which have been spoken this is in the, this is in the song we have such a hot and high priest who is set on the right hand throne of the majesty in the heaven so again just like uh brother darren said in uh psalms 110 there we go again sitting on the right hand so we know that's the right hand the righteous side of the Most High Yahweh. And now I want to jump down to Hebrews 10 and 12. But this man, after the hand, offered one sacrifice for sins forever. So we already know who this one man was who offered the sacrifices for sins forever. So I'm going to be washed away. That was Yahweh's shot. I saved him. And again, sat down on the right hand of Yahweh. So again, this is letting you know that the right hand is the righteous side where Yahweh's shot sits. So it was also a key to that. Then I'm going to jump down to uh, Hebrews 12 and 2. Now, looking at the Yahweh Shah, the author and the finisher of our faith. So, again, it's calling Yahweh Shah, the author and the finisher. But earlier, um, Brother Dan just broke down how Melchizedek was the author. So, that's letting you know, again, that's another correlation right there. They're telling you that Yahweh Shah was the, was, was the author and was the um, finisher of our faith, of the word. And just like it says in the beginning, it was the word. That's letting you know that. Just to correlate, this is this is how you get the precept. So when you when you try to put stuff together, this is how you understand and draw lines together. You get a better understanding of things. <clears throat> so let me get back to it. I'm in uh, Hebrews 12 and 2. Who for the joy that is set before him endured the cross, despising the shame that is set down on the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. So again, sitting down on the right hand. And so another thing that, because um, um, Melchizedek had many nicknames, had many names he went by. He was also known as the king of righteousness. And just like I said earlier, for somebody to call him the king of righteousness, and also we know in Romans 3 and 23, that we know that for all have sinned and came short of the glory of God, but Yahweh Shah. So we already know that this has to be, this has to be, um, we have we have another. This has to be um talking about the same person, Keith that because he wouldn't he wouldn't talk about another person the same way he was talking about Yahweh Shah because he wants to set that different because he was the savior he was the chosen one. And also I want to I want to uh, dwell on basically the uh, the meaning of the keys of that. It's basically the, the king of righteousness. Um, and this would be Strong's H. Four 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 two, and also in Strong's uh, H four four twenty eight, it means a king, royal. So basically, that name just means a royal priest line or or a uh, seed line or the priesthood. So basically, that's letting you know this is the start of the priesthood. Basically, started from Yahweh Shah all the way down to when he came. And he buried on the he buried on the uh, tree for our sin. And before and also I wanted to jump down to 
Hebrews 5 and 10. And called of God, a high priest, the order of Melchizedek. So again, it's letting you know the high priest. I just read earlier how Yahweh Shah was the high priest. So again, we're making this correlation to let you know that these two people are the same and that, and that you have to understand that <laughs> throughout the Bible, not just Yahweh Shah, but there are also uh, many times that people will, will come one time and they will come in another spirit. And this is, this is for them because they're ordained to, um, they're ordained to um, fulfill many prophecies. And these prophecies all can't be fulfilled in one lifetime. So what the Most High does is he brings them back in different lifetimes of different prophets to fulfill these prophecies throughout the, throughout the storyline and history of Israel. Because without our prophets coming through again and again, showing us the way, we would be lost astray. So that's why Yahweh brought Melchizedek from the beginning, because nobody would be able to interpret the law. So he had to start us off on a good foot. And that's why he brought him back again, Isaac, brought him back again, Jacob, and brought him back again, Solomon. So he could continue to instill that in him because we would be lost without that guidance because he is the order, he's the priesthood, like I said earlier. Yeah, it's always a spotter. Exactly. And I want to, uh, Hebrews 5 and 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, fear of dulling, of dull of hearing. This is like I said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't even look. I ain't even set it up like that. That was just me talking, man. But oh, you know, that's Paul was just like, "Hey, bro, hey, stop being ignorant." <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like basically dull of hearing. Just like I said, man, he knows. He knows we're dull of hearing. We're hard. We're hard headed. So that's why he brought him. That's why he brought him back so many times to instill that into us. And I'm going to let uh, Brother Darren take it over. Yeah, to, to go further in more details, uh, I'm going to jump to Hebrews uh, 6 and 20, when he makes it clear as day for people who didn't understand the hints. It says, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Yahweh Shai made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So he's letting you know that right now. Uh, I'm going to read 7 and 1 after I give them. So I'm going to talk about the title. You know, he, got, he also has another title, which is the King of Peace. Mm -hmm. you know, and of course, you know, people don't, like I said, don't know how to connect the dots here and there. You got to understand that, you know, the Messiah was also called the King of Peace. You know, like I said, line upon line, priest of the pun, priest of. So I'm going to jump to Romans real quick, chapter 3, and I'm going to read verse 10. And it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There he, there is none that seeketh after God. So he's letting you know you have to. We needed Melchizedek to set up our order because nobody else would be able to understand it or interpret it in the way that you know we're able to understand it. So basically, what he's letting you know is uh, I'm gonna jump to Isaiah nine and six, just going more into details to help you understand that you know the Messiah. It's also Melchizedek. So I'm going to jump to Isaiah 9 and 6. As soon as I can get to it. All right, here we go. I'm okay. And it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So... Mm. Then you know, clear as day, you know, that's how you tie them all in together because, you know, you're going to have, I'm sure you're going to have friends and people and things like that that's not going to, you know, try to understand it or anything like that. Uh, so that, that explains the king of righteousness and the king of peace. And I have a video at the end. I'm not trying to go too far off, but I have a video at the end, you know, to go further more into detail to understand, you know, how the Bible came about and how, you know, the priesthood, you know, the background of the priesthood and things like that. So we're going to put it at the end. It's, it's more of like a spiritual understanding for people who already knows, you know, the foundation of things. But, I mean, it's interesting to check out, too. But I'm going to pass it to Brother Paris. And if you want to close out or give, you know, something else to talk about. Oh, yeah, I'm going to uh, close it up. But I wanted to uh, start with Hebrews. Seven, one through three. 
for this for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from from the slaughter of the kings and blessed them, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by in terms of the king of righteousness, as also the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. Just like Brother Darren said earlier, he's just letting you know that correlation between Yahweh Shai and Melchizedek. That's letting you know that's the same person. That's why that's how, that's why Abraham blessed him with that ten percent, because just like that's going back the tithing. That's why he blessed him because ten percent of what he got. He's blessing the priest. He said he just got he just got back from war, so the uh the spoils of war. He wanted to show Melchizedek uh favor because he had blessed him by praying for him to the most high. So he blessed him with ten percent of everything he had. I'm gonna jump down to uh Hebrews seven and three and this is just like like the Son of God and we also know who also is referred to the Son of God. And who was his only begotten son? Who was Adam? Who was also Yahweh Shah? Who was also Solomon? So basically, I'm gonna uh, start right here, seven and three. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made unto the Son of God, abide in the priest continually. So basically, it, it describes him without mother, without beginning, without gene genealogy. So this is letting you know that he's always been there. So where where else in the Bible have we have we read this? I mean, let us know that he's always been there with the Most High. And I'm gonna jump down to John one and one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it's letting you know Yahweh Shah was the Word because he was the order of the keys of day, which means priesthood. He was one who started the Word and the life that was spoken into our people. And another thing I want to jump down to is is these titles all belong to the Most High, the Mo uh, to Messiah, Yahweh Shah. I'm going to start with uh, Jeremiah 33, and I'm going to go through 15 through 18. In those days, at that time, I will cause a branch of righteousness to grow unto David, and he shall execute the judgment and the righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall, shall dwell safely. And this in the name where she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. For so thus says the Lord, King David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. So that's letting you know that King David will never want another king before him. He will always want to be king. He will always be king. Uh, 18. Neither shall the priest, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings, offering, to kindle meat offerings, to do sacrifice continually. So that's when you know the Levites will, will not want any more priests or no, no false priesthood before them. And I'm going to jump to uh, Jeremiah 23 and 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this in his name, whereby shall be called the Lord our righteousness. So this thing, you know, this is talking about our righteousness, that branch of David, which was, this letting you know, that there, that the, there was prophesied that a savior would come from the seed of David. Just talking about Yahweh Shah. This is the order of the keys of David, which is the patriarch, which is the um, priesthood. So all this correlates and lets you know that it comes down to, to our salvation. Because without Makiza David, without Yahweh Shah coming to be our Lord, our righteousness, our savior, none of us will have the salvation or the chance to have salvation right now. So we really have to understand where this all started and where this begins because without that we don't have the interpretation of the Bible of the Bible that we have today. And I'm gonna close it out uh with a couple of verses in Revelation. I'm gonna start with Revelation seventeen and fourteen. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings. They that are with him are called and chosen by them and faithful. That's saying you know you already know who the Lamb, the Lord of the Lord and King of Kings is. And they want to make war with the Lamb. That's when you know they want to make war with the Word. They want to go against the Word of the Most High, Yahweh. And that's why that's why we have issues with the world today. That's why a lot of people that's why a lot of people have issues with the world today and a lot of things are going on that people don't understand with the pedophilia and all this. Because there are with the people that are going against the Most High and the Bible. And that's just telling you that there's going to be a war at hand. He's going to be the leader of this war. Now I'm going to jump down to Revelation 19 and 16. And he has, <clears throat> he has on his, on his vesture 
on his side, name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. So that's letting you know and confirm it again. Who is King of Kings, Lord of the Lord, who is sitting on the right hand throne of Yahweh, making that right hand move of righteousness from beginning to end to now. And that's pretty much it. Um and I'm a, just like Brother Darren said, I'm a, when I get done editing, I'm gonna attach these two videos. So if y'all want a better or deeper learning, y'all just stick to the end and watch those videos. And I appreciate everybody for watching. All the Aquas, Aziam, Shalom. And uh catch you on the next one. Appreciate it. Shalom. Shalom. days or end of life but may like unto the son of god abide a priest continually when you talk about mckeezadek you're talking about radiation okay there is no beginning no end to the energy to the light this is a higher form of a celestial priesthood the priesthood of aaron is way lower than the priesthood of melchizedek melchizedek priesthood wrote the bible to the order of uh aaron and levi Melchizedek priesthood is greater than the Aaronic priesthood and law of Moses. Melchizedek's light covenant is greater than Israel's blood covenant. You can't fake Melchizedek's order. It's a radiation priesthood. Sorry about the misspelling. Light separates real from fake. See, when you turn the lights on, you see the real from the fake, right? But when the Son of Man comes,